how do you see our outlook and our our stamp on the industry uh, differing from the way that you got uh, your generation did? Okay. Good, serious question, that one. I like it. Um, well, firstly, believe it or not, I still forget that I'm not the same generation as the people that are entering the business. <laughs> I don't see that difference. Yeah. Um, I don't feel any more sort of mature than you guys. Yeah. Uh, I just don't. Uh, so, and the thing is, when I'm in an environment where I'm speaking to groups of graduates or whatever, I... I don't feel particularly uber confident mm. as though I've been there and done it all. I know what I'm on about. I just don't. I don't. I, I, I you know, take everyone as they come. And some of it, you know, I could feel just a slightly bit anxious about meeting a fresh graduate just joining the business. Why? Because I don't feel any better than them, and I'm not any better than them. And I want to know them and understand who they are as a person, and they're the same of me. This, so, so that that never changes. I think in terms of what's changed, my generation, to be honest, I don't think of it. Yes, we've achieved. I think my mentors, if you like, in the previous generation did way more in terms of civil engineering. I think what my generation are doing is understanding uh, people, yeah. understanding working practices and the whole transition to digital way of working that's relatively new and probably within the last 10 years. I think that's really the legacy of the genera my generation. I still think I'm halfway through my career. I've probably done the calcs and I'm a little bit more, uh, but uh, I'm not 50 yet. Um, so I think I think the next generation will be much more focused on engineering as a service, as a productization, if you like. So it will become less of a, it'll become more business-like. So the focus will be on the business as opposed to on the profession, like it or not. I do feel it's going to go more that way. So a client will ask for an outcome. Yeah. They will say, I don't know, I want increased capacity on this motorway or yeah. I want... 50% uh, more fresh water out of this, this sewage works. Yeah, That's what they want. That's the outcome. Or even more, they want their uh, people within their authority to to be X percent healthier be yeah. and, uh, through, through potable water supply improvements. So that sort of thing. So it's going to change in terms of what engineering means because it's going to be based on this is what I want to happen yes. rather than I want a bridge. It's not I want a bridge. I want to get my, I want to be able to get from A to B in certain, you know, yeah. in two hours. Go away and deal with it. Yeah. Okay. So it will all be based on outcomes. So that's how I think it's going to differ, differ. And the business model will have to adjust to reflect that. I think there'll be way more automation. Yep. So um, detailed design, as we know it, will change. QSing will yep. obviously change. Um, and it will become way more systems-based. So I do see that there will be a real step change in the industry over the next 30, 40 years. Massive. Mm -hmm. It will still need professional people, perhaps even more skilled than they have been in the last 40 years. But I think it will need more understanding of systems engineering, um, project management, program management and uh, the commercial skills. Yeah. Do you think do you think then if it, if it changes to an outcome based uh, client approach yeah. plus then the advancements in BIM, the if we're if we're using if 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 the norm is then to go and use I don't know 4D, 5D yeah. BIM, uh, and and there's there's this step change to sort of you've got a, a huge number of uh, incoming uh, staff that is able to uh, that is able to to pick that up very very quickly because because of the, the sort of uh, 
nature of dealing with technology and if they're able to turn things around very quickly do you see it as being i wouldn't say less people orientated more computer orientated i'd say do you think businesses will be able to take on more than they currently can with the same uh level of staff and the same numbers of staff than than is currently there productivity will increase massively yeah um standardization is already happening yeah um bim will reduce the number and complexity of calculations that people have to do you know obviously infrastructure is founded on very uneven ground yeah. topography all the rest of it so you can never entirely uh, it's, not it's not like a factory environment but what you can do is you can use automation to get to a point where the level of design is massively reduced um, which means you'll be able to do more productivity will massively increase in my view um, having said that it needs to because we we won't have enough professionals in the industry otherwise mm. this isn't a threat to engineers it's an opportunity yeah. and I'm not just saying that because I'm uh, I'll be retired in 20 years I'm <laughs> It is a genuine opportunity, but I think engineers of the future are going to have to be way more computer savvy. So almost, I think compute, uh, civil engineering degrees are after going to have to be morph into a civil engineering stroke computer science type yeah. type education. Um, but I do think uh, there's a huge. I think the MG, civil engineer as a currently the profession is currently i think that's going to change in terms of academic requirements i think it's got to okay uh, not in terms of less but in terms of what yeah so way more mathematicians uh, applied physicists that kind of thing and uh, and computer scientists is that just to keep up with the the bim requirements because no. the way i yeah, the way i see it is sort of like is is if it if it works more towards those um that that standardization that i mean the, the holy grail is that you can just pull off the shelf designs constantly yeah. Um, yeah but if you're moving more towards that and you've got these logs um by by, by upgrading these these uh upgrading and, go, and going with the current bin uh compliance and the, and the upgrades that are going on there it's do you not see it as being more taking standardized designs that are already there from i don't know now from in in 20 years time we can say 20 years ago they did this Mm -hmm. and saying okay well now it becomes a problem solving exercise of how do i almost tweak this this thing that's already 80 percent done and apply it to this scenario instead Um, possibly i think you might go further than that yeah be able to manipulate that based on loads you know yeah ground models and create a finished design I do. I think I think we'll get there, so, which highlights that I think it's going to change from civil engineering to systems engineer. Yeah. It's all about how you get from A to B. And I do think that that will. So it's becoming going to become far more process driven. Mm. It's going to become much more of a project management type profession. Yeah. Do you think but then? It's only my. I know. Yeah. I talk yeah. About it because we. I do a lot with ICE and uh, that's very much their agenda, looking at how how the industry is going to change in the future and how to adapt and all this good stuff. It's fascinating. But, what do you uh, think happens to uh, your sort of resident engineer roles then? Because at the end of the day, something has to be built on site. Yeah. But do you think the, the sort of the resident engineer role, because of because of the way BIM will work, will become a thing of the past? In, in, it will become a very minor uh, a thing? Or, no, or do you think I, it's always going to have a necessity? I think it's always going to be there up to a point because clients always like somebody to sue or blame or whatever, <laughs> and they need confirmation that it's built to a standard. And I think because of the uh, obvious issues around building in outside in an environment that's far from ideal, you're going to get quality control issues. I don't think you can get around that short of using robots. I think yeah. we're going to need that or else the client won't have the comfort that it's built to a certain standard and um, the client won't have the comfort that um, there's nobody to sue. So I think that <laughs> we'll need to continue to go down that route, but it yeah. will become far more efficient and a lot more virtual. Yeah. So you, you could well have a lot of plant with 
cameras, videos, yeah. what have you, that, so that there's less need to actually be on site because health and safety will play a big part in this as well. How do, you, how do you think that'll affect the consultant contractor relationship? I think that they will continue to integrate within the profession. So I don't. I think the the days of a consultancy firm will reduce over time. Not that the likes of Pals or our report be here, but I just think it'll be slightly different in terms yeah. of our offer. Um, and I think the contractors will change in terms of their level of technical capability as well. Yeah. There's there are very few organisations that do both. Yeah. Um, it's a, it really is a case of well, I either build stuff or I design it. And yeah. whenever organisations are trying to do both, there's been problems, um, and it hasn't gone as well as it perhaps should have done. So it's interesting whether that will change over time as well. Mm. Yeah, I think in my head I see it. You'll end up with some hybrids of uh, of the two. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. It, it's a question I I don't really know the answer to because. Well, nor 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 does anyone no. really, but it's um it it's one of those that it it will always have to be that contractor consultant relationship almost has to be there. Or it, it, but then it, again, does it? it, it it's in a way. No, there's a the the businesses will be set up very differently because they have a very different risk profile. So yeah. it's always likely that it's very difficult. Several contractors have acquired consultancies. Yeah. You just realise that it's it's very very hard to make money in, dis, in consultancy, and you've got to be very very efficient. Yeah. Um, whereas staff cost in a contracting organisation is a very very small part of their turnover. In a consultancy, staff is the consultancy. Yeah. There ain't a great deal else apart from a few desks. So so you're in it, the business model is so different. Trying to bring them together just seems yeah. to cause problems. So, yeah. Oh, it'll be interesting. I, yeah, it'll be, be interesting to see how it does. It, it evolves. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank right. you. For a really good discussion. And uh, yeah. today again, sometime. Yeah, absolutely, we will.